Hello everybody, my name is Aging Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks video. And today, well, today I want to make a new format, which on my um, German channel actually is pretty darn acceptable. And Hello everybody, my name is Aging Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks video. Today with the first episode of How It Really Is. A format which I kind of came up with for my German channel where I have a look at Wargaming's videos and make my personal comment, my personal opinion to them. Maybe make them a little bit satirical, maybe make them a little bit funny even. Just me, I, me personally talking about those or maybe even ranting about those. Nevertheless, I, today's topic is Holiday Ops 2019 and we have a look at what Wargaming is going to, in quote, gift us. Also, if you like the video and want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comment section below or in other ways to contact me. Because, well, if it goes well, I'll do more of them. But let's have a look now at the Holiday Ops 2019 Unwrap Your Boxes video. The holiday season is the perfect time to give presents. And what present would tankers like during Holiday Ops 2019? What presents I would like for Holiday Ops 2019? Well, in um, five days is Wargaming Fest on Saturday in Moscow. I would like to hear changes to the matchmaking, general rebalancing of most tiers, and uh, what could we do else? Oh yeah, right, rebalancing of gold shells. That would be great. That would be my personal presence, which I would love to hear. But what does Wargaming plan? Large boxes, of course. Uh, not really, of course, but whatever. Choose a box from four different collections. New Year, Christmas, Lunar New Year, and Magic New Year. As you probably know already, those three four boxes have different purposes. Like when you complete the album of Christmas or New Year or something, you get dif different bonuses. Like here you probably get more credits per battle, more XP, more crew XP and more free XP. Those are like the four different categories. And therefore all vehicles, not as last year. Last year they were um, country specific like the second campaign is. Today or this year it's all for every vehicle, just at one type gives you one type of bonus. A large box will guarantee three gifts, two decorations from the collection selected, one level five and one of a random level. So the as third last gift year. is gold. Additionally, the box may contain one of these gifts. Days of uh, it's kind of a weird wording right here. Not a, you, it's not additionally like you paid for that. I think that those boxes will be around two dollars or two euros, depending what area you are. Also, fun little note: um, EU countries already make their first steps against loot boxes, which is actually pretty interesting. And I'm not entirely sure if it was on the German side. Oh no, never mind. Here it is. Note: those boxes won't be available on Belgium because Belgium passed a law which. Um, prohibits selling of loot boxes, I think, or the general idea of loot boxes. Pretty interesting that Belgium went for that way, but that's just tri trivia on the side. Other than that, it's really important to notice that you will get at least two euros back in, um, I don't know, in worth, because that is what the EU law actually wants them to do, or actually have to do. This is also what they are stating right here, that you can't lose the problem is, it's kind of deceiving. For example, you'll get 250 gold, which is great, don't get me wrong. But then you probably get, as he's going to say right now... ...of premium account time. Credits. Credits is not really a premium good, if you want to say it like this. So credits, for example, would be just wasted money, in my personal view. Might be different for you, but in the end, credits you can easily farm with premium account and a premium tank. Even more gold or one of our premium vehicles, the KV-222. Pretty decent tank, has special matchmaking, has a trash turret, but an incredible hard hull. It's okay. The Leia FH-18. 
probably one of the brokenest artillery pieces in the game. It is basically a Hetzer as an artillery with global range, with 400 meter base view range, which you can, if you take coffee and croissant with optics, you can easily get, you can easily be a scout actually in this vehicle. And you have heat, which when you are top tier, just penetrates anything. And as far as I know, I'm not the only one which does like it. Shout out to the awesome Epic guys. B2, the M4 improved. Rather the M4 trash, because let's be honest, it's nothing improved. It, it's, it's horrific how bad this gun is. The Tehran 3. A tank which we got for Gamescom, for goers for the Gamescom, and to be honest, it's just a mediocre vehicle. Panzer IV is such a better vehicle, it's not really something you should look forward to. Last year was a little bit better, I think, with the T26, um, T28 F40, which, was act which is actually a pretty decent tank and has an incredible strong gun for Tier 4. And the menacing defender. And obviously it has to be the defender, otherwise you wouldn't want to buy those boxes. Last year it was the Type 95 and the Scorpion G, today is the defender and the Scorpion G. And oh well, we all know how much people like that, as we can already see from the likes-dislike ratio. And it's even, it's even funnier when you're looking at the, for you American viewers out there, to look at the at the like-dislike ratio of the American viewers with 215, 66% <laughs> likes. That's not a lot. The powerful Scorpion G, the stealthy E25. Which will make the E25 not appear in advanced calendar like it did last year for like $50 package. Or the new unstoppable IS-3 autoloader that can surprise the enemy with three shots in a row. Interesting that Wargaming First of all, Wargaming goes through with their idea to give the IS-3A an autoloader and I think a lot of people of you already saw that I don't really like it necessarily. It's kind of sad that Wargaming actually just immediately sells it in that kind of fashion so people want to get it because it's so new and they might think it is a broke mechanic, so yeah, we'll see. On the note of those premium vehicles, I'll be going to make a quick review of all of those vehicles, but I'm just going to compress it into one video. I'll be waiting till obviously 1.3 hits the board so we can have a look at the new i3A, but I'm now going to start getting our all beloved footage and my personal opinions on those vehicles. So you know if it's actually worth it for you to buy some boxes and hope to get those vehicles. And there's more on offer. Something special for you this time of year. You can get. When I saw this first time, I was pretty um, hyped about this because I was first like, "What is that? Is this a new vehicle or something?" One is also one is what is very interesting is that those vehicles have separate names, at least on the website. I do like the idea of those really new, still tank-looking customization styles. One thing though I don't like is with styles, you're not allowed to use personal emblems, which is kind of sad because I need my raptor head because I'm raging raptor, re. And second off, at the moment they're just available through those boxes, which is really sad to me personally because I do like how all of them look. We're going to have a look at them in just a minute, roughly. During a nuclear war, a grill 15 that's protected from grenades by meshes and grills. I do have to point out, but I do not think that those styles actually add armor because then you could actually argue pay to win. Of course, for the uh, for the Grilla 15, it's unnecessary because duh, it's a Grilla 15. It doesn't have armor anyway. But it could be pointed out that it could be pay to win to get styles from loot boxes which give you additional armor. I highly doubt, though, that this is actually true, that they give you additional armor, because then I don't know what Wargaming would do, because then they would pr basically have done 3D customization already. And second, they I don't know how they would implement that. Like They legit have to make it either a new vehicle type, which again is kind of weird when you look at the um, website, which we, again we should do just in a second. And other than that, well, it's just weird. So... They look good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're going to give you additional armor, like the spokesperson here says. A bad Chatillon 25T is decorated <laughs> with a cuirass, a helmet and sword of a French cavalryman. And a T-57 with a special exterior kit for fighting infantry in the jungle. 
that Gatling gun looks pretty dope. And a little Snoopy up there. That, like, again, those skill, skins or those styles look amazing. And they really make my hopes up for customization, 3D customization. These skins can be obtained only from this year's large boxes. Get ready for the festive season and new year. Choose presents for you and your friends. Again, I personally have to say I do dislike the idea or the, um, the marketing choice to sell those styles just through those boxes. So once again, I'm going to have a look at all those things right here. If you wish, and I would love to do so, I'm going to set up an online form, an Excel sheet, and I will make an open source program. I might be asking people on Reddit too, um, if they would be willing to help me with doing that, an, an open source where we are going to set in, put in all the necessary um, data we have to see what is roughly the rate at what you are going to get because so far Wargaming is not going to disclose that thing. One more thing which I want to point out before um, we're going further, I do not know how it was last year because last year I didn't buy boxes because I basically I didn't need gold nor did I need a, um, the tanks. But interestingly enough, they're saying if you find yourself unwrapping a premium tank you already have, you will be compensated its full value in gold. This statement here is pretty bad because so far this implies, this statement implies that if you are getting, for example, I don't know, probably you're getting the Scorpion G, but you already have the Scorpion G. And you would love to get I3A, yet you already have the Defender and the E25. And I'm guessing those are like in a bundle or in a pool of tanks you can get. And those are in a pool of tanks you can get. So what this sentence right here is implying is that even though you got a Scrubbing G, you have all the others too, you won't get the IS3A, you will just get the gold of the Scorpion G, which would increase the luck needed to get the specific tank you want by an incredible margin. Again, tell me how it was last year in the comment section. I heard mixed results on my German channel, so it's pretty hard for me. One last thing, once more, those styles look awesome. It is interesting to note though that they have specific names. You can see the Bachatillion 25T Marengo, or Marajon, I, I'm not sure, I'm not French. Interesting enough, it's also an Israeli version for some reason. Probably a shout out to the M4A1 Revalorisé, which basically is also an Israeli tank. The Grillo 15 L63 Eagleschnäuzchen, which literally translated means um, headshot snoot. Like, yeah, or headshot nose. Something like this. Again, I love how this tank looks. And obviously they're showing my tank because it has three gun marks. Cough, cough. It really looks cool. I would love to see something like this 3D customization on in the game for every tank. So, yeah. But once more, I don't know if this is actually going to add armor or not. It will be up to the people and up to probably tanks.gg showing. If anybody has those skills already, I'd love to have a test with you guys when when it's out then. The IS-7 Granite or Granite or I don't know how it's called in English. Granite? It's also pretty decent looking and looks awesome. We can see that there are additional armor plates on the top and the twin um, and the dual, I don't know, 12.7 centimeter, 12.7 uh, millimeter. And the aircraft gun looks really cool. It was a really cool skin, don't get me wrong. I really would love to get something out of this. And the same goes for the T57 Heavy, which is called the Heavy, oh, the T57 58 Heavy Hellhound. Um, that's pretty interesting that they added the 58 there because as far as I know the T-58 heavy tank is a T-57 variant with a 105mm gun as shown here in the tank encyclopedia. And you can see the turret looks a lot more different but... Again, they can't change it, but it's interesting that they added those numbers because it could imply that this, or imply that the T57 58 will never come. It would be also pretty broken if you think about it, or busted with a 155 millimeter gun. Oh well, this is the video. I thank you so much for your attention, and well, let me know how you like this format. I can all. I'm also thinking to just do it um, for the Super 130 PM 
tank as well. And we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for your attention and goodbye and good luck on the battlefield. Yeah.